Hey guys, it's Major Aminas here, and I am bringing you a free-for-all commentary on the map Powerhouse. It's a 25 for free. I managed to get a pretty nice killing frenzy in it, um, and I go straight for the rocket spawns. The rocket spawns are always the first thing you kind of want to think about going for. It's always a risky situation. If you think you're in a match with really good players, maybe don't go for it, maybe shy away from it, maybe go for shotgun spawn, but the rocket spawn isn't a bad first spawn to go for. Um, but essentially, I wanted to do this commentary to talk about um, tactics in free-for-alls. Now, when I used to be a Halo 2 player, Halo 3 player, all I used to play was free-for-all games. I used to play Lone Wolves solely and try and get the highest rank on that. I managed to get to a higher skill, 42, which I was pretty proud of back in the day. Um, wasn't quite general status, but I was still you know, relatively proud of it. Um, I used to only play free-for-all. And I've, through that I've developed a couple of strategies, a couple of tactics, um, and I hope I'll be able to help some of you players, you Halo players, um, get a bit better at Halo, free for all. Now, um, essentially I find that there are three main strategies towards facing a free for all, um, and the first of which you want to keep in mind is um, stealing kills. Now, I know that sounds cheap and I know you're like, what the fuck Major, why are you encouraging me to steal kills, I don't want to do that. Um, but it's actually a really good idea in Halo and uh, only on free for all, I'm not saying do it in Team Slayer, but I'm just saying free for all, um, stealing kills, it's a really good idea and essentially an example to prove this is if two people um, have a head-on collision on this game and they're both full shield, um, Chances are on a free for all because there's you know there's like twelve players, eight players, and it gets a bit chaotic at times. And if someone comes behind you, um, you two, whilst you're having this argument, chances are either they'll steal one of your kills um, or they'll go for you, and the two players will gang up on you, which is never a good idea. So you don't want to be one of those two players who are in the head-on collision. You want to be one of the people intervening. You want to be one of the people to get on top of them and try and get the double kill. Um, it's always a good tactic in free-for-all, and you should keep that in mind. The second thing that I want to move on to is movement. Now, movement is an integral part of any game. It's an integral part of Call of Duty, Halo, Battlefield. Movement is always good, and it's different in each game. In Halo free-for-all... I tend to find that the best thing to do is always keep moving. If you're staying in the same position for too long on the Halo free for all, you'll start to attract attention to yourself, especially if you've got a hold of one of the power weapons. People will start to realize that you're doing well and they'll start coming to there and people try to revenge kill you as well. That happens a lot in free for all. So you want to be wary of that. You want to make sure that you're always on your toes, always keep moving. You'll see a lot of that in this gameplay. Um, and it's just really one of the best ideas. Um, and the third thing that I wanted to move on to was power weapons. Um, now, power weapons, it's obvious, it's Halo, of course you're going to go for power weapons. But you want to you wanna keep on top of the power weapon spawns, you want to make sure that someone doesn't get your rocket launcher, doesn't get your shotgun, etc, etc. Now, the power weapons aren't too powerful on this map. I mean, for example, the grenade launcher and the alligator gun. I call it the alligator gun, I don't know what the fuck the official name for it is. Um, these are the more underrated power weapons. If you're in a lobby with people who you think are really good and are going to get a hold of the power weapons, it's, it's sometimes not a bad idea to go for the grenade launcher and alligator gun because chances are someone won't have taken them because they're not the most popular of um, weapons. Although the alligator gun is in a central spawn location in the map, so people might go for it. So you're better off going for either the grenade launcher or the shotgun. The shotgun, I think, is one of the best power weapons to check the spawns for because it's at the end of the map, it's a perfectly reliable um, power weapon. Um, I tend to try and get hold of rockets and shotgun. The rockets are absolutely insane and it's always good to keep your eye on that spawn, even if you can't get hold of the rockets. Just see if you know, if it's taken, just maybe wait just like a couple of seconds, see if there's any chance of it spawning near you. If it's not, just get out of there because they've purposely made the rocket power weapon spawn in a particularly hard place to get because you're in a dead end and if people fall down on you chances are you're going to get raped so don't spend too long at the rocket power weapon spawn but at least check it every so often because if someone gets a hold of the power uh, <coughs> power weapon if someone gets a hold of the rocket launcher and you don't have it chances are you're going to get raped um I tend to, ch but like I said, I tend to try and juggle the rocket launcher and the shotgun because you've, if you had a hold of both of them, then the rockets can keep you good for long and mid-range encounters, and the shotguns can keep you good at short-range encounters. Because otherwise, if you try and use rockets for short-range encounters, chances are you might kill yourself. Um, 
But yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say on the topic of free-for-all tactics. As you can see, I'm about to get the killing frenzy, I think, or I might already have it, I'm not really sure. Um, and as you can see, I'm trying to run away from the conflict, as usual. I may look like a pussy, but it's actually a really good idea. If you if you even think that for a second that you're, like, if you're on low shield, um, I would just get the hell out of there. If there's more than two people and you've got no shields, I'd get out of there. You want to make sure that you're on full shields. You want to make sure that each encounter you get into, you are you have more shields than your opponent. I mean, that's one of the best ideas. Because chances are, if you get into an encounter with someone who has full shields, if they're as good as you, if not better, they might end up beating you. So you just kind of want to keep your opponents at a disadvantage. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this commentary. It's come to an end. Um, and I hope you gathered something from my tips and tricks. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.